Hello guys, how you doing? This is JP Saricolia once again coming to you with another book review and this time I'm going to follow a previous book um, that was the New Mutants uh, or the X-Force um, Premier Edition. I actually like the variant more, uh, the direct sale one, so that's the one I order. Fabian Nicieza, Rob Liefeld, uh, Todd McFarlane, you have Mark Pinsella, uh, Mike Minola, and uh, John Romita Jr. JRJR. Uh, here in the back of this, you have Rob Liefeld, uh, transforms the new mutants into a force to be reckoned with. And you have all the issues, all the covers. Um, and at the bottom, you can see collecting new mutants uh, at 98 to 100, the three last issues of, of that run. Uh, new mutants annual number seven, X-Men annual uh, 15, X-Factor annual six. You have X-Force from one to number 15. Uh, and Spider-Man uh, 16, you got Cable, uh, Blood and Metal 1 to 2, and Material from New Warriors Annual 1, and X-Force Annual uh, number 1. Now, removing the dust jacket, you see, the, uh, the, of course, the little intro always on the side says, Big Guns and Attitude. Yeah, definitely, that's the 90s for you. Big guns, big a lot of pouches, and here you can see there's a, a biography of the creators. Now you you see this the cover uh, the interior cover uh, this is uh, actually when Marvel started changing the format uh, this came out a few years back uh, before it was just a silver lettering this actually was the first one that as I remember the first one that was color uh, now they have this you know the the wraparound art which I, I really like it very cool but I like this the, this format that they used to have the really uh, as you can see Marvel and they have this which was new and different then this uh, first page and of course this is volume one the volume two is actually the the Deadpool and X-Force uh, omnibus which I will review as well uh, and it's pretty much the continuation of this is uh, and as you can see right here in the intro you have the writers you have people like Rob Liefeld you got Fabian Nicieza you had uh, Judy Bogdanov, uh, Len Kaminsky, Peter David. Uh, you got uh, Ge uh, Gavin, uh, Gavin Curtis, Todd McFarlane, Dan Slott. And then, of course, you have a lot of pencilers, starting from Rob Liefeld, uh, Juan Yap, Mark Bagley, Tom Rainey, uh, Terry Shoemaker, and so on, so on. John Bogdanov, you can see Todd McFarlane. There's a lot of people, Mike Mignola, uh, Pacella, uh, Greg Capullo, and JRJR. A lot of inkers, uh, as you can see. Uh, Joseph Rubenstein, one of them, or Nichols, Al Milgram. And what I like about the omnibus is, of, of course, you always got have an intro when it shows the New Mutants, uh, the classic, uh, definitely New Mutants, uh, as I, I had spoken in the previous review uh, of the X-Force, of the New Mutants. Uh, uh, the story is uh, very vast. Uh, follow the, the, the events of, you know, X-Men Mutant Massacre. You also have X-Men Inferno. Uh, this is the one that I reviewed previously, Cable and the New Mutants. Uh, definitely a good introduction to this book. If you're interested in this book, you should have this one uh, because that's the beginnings. And in between, of course, you have this one, the Extinction Agenda, where there's is a crossover between the, the three important titles at that time of the X-Men, which was, of course, uh, the Uncanny X-Men, and you have uh, the X-Factor. Uh, and, of course, you, you go into X-Men. Now, this is the first chapter here. It's number 98. Uh, it starts with still with the New Mutants, and this is actually a very important aspect he, this is the introduction of Deadpool and as you can see right here and you see Domino and of course this is Gideon uh, this character is, uh, I would say uh, of course this comes with on the side splash never been a fan of it but it's been used in uh, Life used, used to love to use it actually uh, as you can see um, coming out of this you know of course after uh, you know, the, the book from New Mutants went from zero to be a really not a considered a, a fen phenomenal book into something more uh, mainstream where people were in love, especially young, uh, young readers. They love the energy of the book. And that cemented the popularity of Lifeful. Uh, the New Mutants was not it was not really a, a good selling book in comparison to the other counterparts. As you can see, rare, the introduction. As you can see, totally different. Uh, Deadpool was totally different than what you see him now. Um, he was more brooding. He was more. He was just a you know a killer for hire. So he was not breaking the four walls. He was not funny at all. Um, he was a cool design. As many know, he was just pretty much a swap. He took a swap, uh, a copy of in this case, um, uh, Deathstroke 
from DC, you know, which was at that time, you know, like he had said that your life was a very a big fan of Teen Titans. Uh, and definitely uh, you can see that reflection there. Uh, he's been, of course, Lifeo, uh, and this is actually the departure of Sunspot uh, from the team. Uh, this is on, on, on 90, uh, 99, issue number 99. You have Feral, which will replace, which is replacing actually uh, Rainy uh, Sinclair, uh, Walsh Vane, uh, and now with X Force. And of course, you, you bring, you have Warpath that is coming. Uh, uh, into the James Prowser, we come into uh, to be part of the team. There, there's a change, and you can see that things are evolving. And within the popularity, of course, now of Liefeld, he takes more control of this book. And of course, to the dismay in this case of Louise Simonson, which in the end she leaves the the project and she leaves of course Marvel to go into DC Comics. Um, and of course, that was. Uh, 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 not a pretty chapter, but actually it was good for, in this case, Liefeld. You know, he had cemented his popularity. Uh, he had detractors. A lot of people disliked his work. Uh, but he also had a big support from the fans. And this is the last chat, the last uh, in the issue, the number 100. As you can see, I always liked the design of Warpath during those first years. Definitely like Warpath. Shadow Star, who, who was brought into also. Um, you know, he has more control. I'm not going to tell you that these books are phenomenal story-wise. I'm not going to tell you that the artist part is the best you can find in the industry, even from the 90s. Uh, I read a lot of comments where people praise Liefeld or praise the 90s. And, uh, and to me, that shows a lot of times, you know, a, a lot of people that will praise it are people that grew up in that era. And they found fascination on the art. I'm not going to say that there was. And I'm going to go back a little bit on my personal history. Like I said many times before, I grew up in the 80s. Uh, so my, my, my con connection with comics is from before this era. Life, like I said before, he came into comics at a very young age. Um, he, people saw that he had potential. He had the, definitely had potential. You can see it in his pages. Um, there was potential. Uh, and but even though he had potential, this is from somebody else, hard, um, you know. And you know he came into comics, and you know people, uh, uh, a lot of young people loved his energy into it. And, and you know he he really became a star in comics very very soon. Um, he started. Uh, I think his popularity started when people were start seeing his stuff, especially with DC. That's when he started first. He was doing some stuff with DC, especially with the Hog and Dove uh, comic book that actually brought the attention, uh, uh, you know, opened the, the eyes for a lot of people about his art. He ended up at Marvel, and Marvel, he was doing some film work until he was brought into New Mutants, and automatically, I think, people saw his talent, or he saw his capacity. And like I showed you in the previous one, the New Mutants wasn't bad. There were some good things there, uh, and there were some things that were really, really bad. And that's one of the things about him that there's times where you where you go back into his old art, uh, the stuff that he used to do back in the day, and also some of the newer stuff. You see that there's in one page there is uh, there's so much uh, to like about. You know, you can see a panel where you say, "Man, actually, this is pretty good." And then you turn the page to go to another one, and you bit, you you get disappointed because the art is totally off. And, and that's the part with with Lifeful is like sometimes you you love the guy and you hate the guy. Uh, at the same time, because, you know, he does things where you feel like, man, you know, he could have done a lot better. And uh, you feel that he's just he's being cheap about it. And this is, of, uh, actually, you can see the, the New Warriors, which I'm going to review at some point. And here, of course, this is Mark Bagley art, which I uh, love Mark Bagley. During that time, I think he was uh, uh, really pushing his art. He was doing great. Uh, I think the New, the, the New Warriors was a fantastic run uh, back in the 90s, which I did enjoy. Uh, very uh, full of energy, and I think Mark Barkley was great doing it. Um, and of course, his art was still developing to later on to go into what uh, Spider-Man would be his run with uh, long, long uh, run with Spider-Man. But here you can see Mark Bagley. So going back into life, so there's times when you love the guy, and there's times that you hate his art. Like you feel like he just, he just. It's not like he can accomplish more because you can see that he, there's talent when you go back to this, the, the new, the, the first stuff that he did, like with Hog and Dove, the stuff that he did at the beginning with Marvel, and then you see some stuff was still, you know, still a little raw, but still you can feel that there's potential, and all of a sudden he just brings it down you know like you know all your expectations he shattered those expectations by creating some panel work that was just 
messy you know and lazy you know that's there's no other way to describe it now i'm not trying to say this because i'm trying to discredit the guy because i feel that you know, if you can see his interviews you you're gonna see him uh, all over the the youtube and he's so full of energy she's full of charisma uh, one thing i can say about lifel is that he's like the the power bunny you know like from energizer the energizer bunny because he is so full of energy uh you know he's so vibrant he feels like a, he looks like he, he acts like a young kid you know and uh he's very passionate about what he does and for that reason i think people love him and and for that same reason i feel that there's a level of immaturity uh you know in my mind i'm thinking like he's now older and he still have that energy i can't just imagine how it was when he was in his early 20s when he was just trying to break into comics and here is this some, some this is some art of john bogdanov um, you can see and here you have a panel and this new mutants organizational chart and people that are involved you see cannonball you see karma mirage waltz vein sunspot these are actually the ones that are kind of just moving on the same magma magic uh, you have warlock who actually dies at the end of the previous uh, run well kind of dies he doesn't really die but cypher boom boom richter uh, skits and rusty you got domino you got warpath you got shatterstar you got feral X Force, um, the you know in this case the issue number one, which was a multi uh, a million dollar uh, business for Marvel. They sold five million copies of this. Of course, a lot of people hated it because th those five million copies that were sold. Um, of course, they they have the variant, the poly bag uh, system, where actually you have to buy different ones if you wanted to collect all the different uh, trading cards. So it was just a business. You know, the '90s have it was infamous for a lot of things that were really, really wrong with the industry. Uh, the industry was trying to sell, so um, there was a lot of speculation. All of that that brought into the crash of the industry, and of course, people are blamed. Uh, sometimes people like artists are blamed for this, and I don't think it was uh, Rob's fault. I don't think it's you know Jim Lee's fault. I don't think it's Image's fault. I think it was the industry that was it was set up. Executive, you know, di dictating the way you do business, uh, and all of that was a reflection of it. And when the Xbox came, it was so so people were in love with this, and uh, I don't blame it. I think I, I did like the energy of it. I did like the design of some of this character. Doesn't mean that I'm a fan of some of the drawings, but the characters in itself, like Cable, I like Cable. Uh, I, here you can see Strife uh, on this way, of course, in the angle. So I did like some of the characters. The stories were cheesy, you know, but they were good cheesy in the sense of the 90s. Uh, you can see, I always love that. You know, people are going to hate all the pouches which I'm not against it, you know, hey, it, what it, it, it was the thing, you know, it was what people wanted to see, you know, the militaristic look, the, a team that was, you know, uh, treated like soldiers, because that's what they've definitely, Cable was doing with the X-Force team, so it is, it's what it sold, you know, so there's nothing wrong with that, you can see Domino, when this case copycat, um, this guy that as, as Domino, but, you know, that's something that we're not going to explain here, uh, so, you know, all of that, you know, there's, there's, there's panels where I see that, vibrancy and energy that Ruff had so when he was on, on on his game when he was doing his stuff he was definitely good he had energy it was not the best drawer or the best storyteller but this is a time where you can see panels have changed and the way they the comics are built are totally different and uh, but there's also times where you can see that the art was not up there like you see here this guy you can see the the way the feet a lot of people didn't like the feet because he didn't really do much on it but hey you know it's just that's the way it was and a lot of people would say well you know that was his style that's his technique that's just the 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 special technique that he wanted to implement but here look at this one you can see this the, the tiny little head and the feet it's just nobody's like that you know nobody has this the physique like this and yeah there's some people will justify it saying that that that's how it is but you know there's no justification for wrong anatomy I'm just I'm sorry it, there is none unless you have some avant-garde type of design or you're trying to create some type of different style you know uh, which you know people are entitled to but look at this one for example here's what I'm saying look at that look at that arm looks so weird that tiny little hand and those feet you know it's just that body he looks like a turtle <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. You know, not disrespect to Rob, but that was just not his best. But then he does things like this, like this cover, which is good. You see, you know, I don't know. It's just the way it is. This is Kane. You know, was that Weapon X? Um, 
and then you see, you know, this battle with, you know, with, with Deadpool. It's just, you know, he had potential. You know, he could do it. You know, it's just, you know, I don't know. It just, he maybe felt that he didn't have to. But uh, here you can see there's times where he's impressive. You know, I like this. I like what he did here. And I like this Deadpool. Very different, of course. Uh, his style, you can see always, you know, his style in it. So there's times when he really does the work. Here, for example, this is good. A lot of red here. Here you can see everything is well designed. And, uh, and then, you know, goes times where, you know, it goes out. You know, and there's times where he's impressive. And then he does this. Like this. Look at that little head. You know, he goes from good to bad. And sometimes to really, really bad. And then he goes back to good. Or does this, you know. And then you can see the anatomy. Those little feet. Once you find somebody, an audience, and he did. You know, people are going to love what you do. And they're going to defend you no matter what. Like, I have my favorite artists. Whether they're good or bad, I'm still defending. I love his juggernaut, actually. I think the Kotovukiya Juggernaut varies, look very similar to that. Um, but that's me, the Juggernaut. And like they always like this one. This looks like the Kotovukiya Juggernaut, which I love as a statue. I always like this force. And here you can see this. You know, uh, Teresa Cassidy. You see? She looks so good there. You know, she does look, do, look good. You know, she was done you know the right way you can see that her face she looks very pretty there so there's times where his art is good you know when he does good you know and there's times where he just doesn't do good siren you know siren look good this battle i like this actually like the big panels here um tom cassidy this is one good there, there's you know there's times where he does good and then he goes back into the simple things as this where you look at this he looks i look the po i love the pose but why does he have such a small feet the characters you know stuff like that you know just i don't know it just it was his way and uh, another one here it, this is one of those where i'm telling you what it goes from you know you turn the page and from good to mediocre and bad you know and here for example uh, uh proud star you know, Warpath, he looks good. He's jumping and he looks very menacing. That's a phenomenal look. That I like. But then you turn to this. What's up with that? It's like he's, he looks like a balloon. You know, there is lack of real perspective. You know, you can see that. I know what he's trying to do. But, you know, those feet, he looks so bloated. And you can see that all the time. You know, he went from good to bad. And, you know, you can see stuff like that all, all over his art, you know, and uh, of course, but, you know, people ate it like it was hotcakes and people loved it. You might say, why are you hating on Ruff on this video? And I'm not hating on the guy. I, I don't think I am. I think he had the ability. I love how he did it here. Oh, he looks so menacing. Look at that face. You know, he looks good. Look at that, you know, Spider-Man. That Spider-Man looks good. You know, he had the ability. He could have done a lot better. But, you know, you know, we cannot just go back. And this is something, this is the X-Spider-Man uh, uh, 16. That was the last, actually, Todd McFarlane book. He looks wicked, you know, that juggernaut. Um, that was the last chapter. And, he, you know, pretty much this was a crossover, which was kind of nice. And you can see the art of Todd. Todd really very peculiar art. Uh, very cartoony at times. Um, something that he was more reflected of. So you can see as, over, as the time goes, uh, you can see Cannonball. I like that face. I like that smile. That really, really, that's a lot of teeth. I think that's more teeth than what actually people really have, but well, whatever. <laughs> you know? But yeah, this thing, you know, I think this is just 90s. 90s got, what, got crazy. The World Trade Center in New York City. Um, I don't know. It just, it, it, there were good things. There were times where all oh, the art was, it was phenomenal. There were times where the art was okay. You know, and uh, look at those. Took my falling eyebrows, eyelashes, so eyebrows all combined into one. Yeah, that's the 90s to you. You know, not the best sometimes, but, you know, it was fun. It was fun at times. But yes, and here you can see that cable looks weird. But yeah, you know, that was tough art. Not the best either. You know, there, that's the reason why sometimes you have people to detract this art. But there was an energy to it, which people love. And I, they defend it. And you know what? Nothing wrong with that. Here, this Rob Liefeld back again. He does some work. I love, like I said, I love that menacing, that smirk, that that smile, that evil laugh. 
that he had in his face. Look at the brotherhood. Look at this. You know, that's a good cover. So there are times where he was good, you know, and there are times where he wasn't. But also you can see a limit, a limitation with the, the his art. And here you can see Fabian, he says, he says uh, does the, of course, the stories. And Rob is doing the plotting. But here on this... Some of this is just phenomenal. Some of the, I can say some of the inking wasn't as good. You know, so it was not really helping as much with the art. But there are times where he's good. And there are times where he was not that good. And, you know, he stopped plotting after, he started uh, drawing after chapter 7, which we'll get to that point. And then he started continuing to plot until uh, issue number 12. So, you know, you see that, and then, you know, of course, he was just separating himself from Marvel. But uh, there's times when he is phenomenal with the art. There's times when his art is good. Like here, like you see Shatterstar. You know, there's this is good. You know, and there's times that it's not that good. You know, I'm not going to hate anymore. I'm just going to say, like, I love this one. This set seven, which was his last. I've always liked his cable. The only thing, if I had, I can do a critique is the way the, the hand is positioned. It's a bit smaller than it should be. Maybe a little larger. Maybe he raised it up a little more. But it's just a matter of perspective, which he lacks a lot of it. You know, he needed maybe more training for it. But uh, but the, regardless of, he feel, he looks good. This is a good cover. This is not a bad cover. And there's times where he is so good. You know, like, I like this one. This battle between Shatterstar and Sauron. You know, Sauron. Um, it's just good. It's just good. And uh, here, you can see that, you know. I don't know. I'm going a little. I'm going to try to go faster so we can finish this. But yes, you know, there's times where he was on top of his game, and then you know he just simply didn't do it. Now eight x fours. Uh, the cover was by Life of very 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 good, but the interior was by someone else. This is when he just started, you know, left and just doing more more plotting. And actually, that was Mike Mignola, the one who was doing the job. And as you can see, you got Grizzly. Look at this cover. This is right Life of. So when I'm looking at the covers. I realized that actually Rob could be good just by, by just doing that. You know, if, if he just if stick to it, like, I don't know, like some other artists do, um, he will be great just by doing just, you know, you know those commissions. Well, you know, I don't think he needs it. You know, I think he has made a name of his own and his own creations involved now with Deadpool and, you know, and all the movies. And, you know, he's taking credit for a lot of stuff that actually he didn't do. But, hey, that's besides the point. Um, but here's Sauron. I, I really like the guy. Uh, um, you know, and regardless of, I feel that, you know, um, you know, he has made a name, you know, then he went to create, he, uh, you know, went to, to, uh, Image Comics and, you know, he ended up having a bad relationship with some of the, the people there to the point that they put him out because he was actually managing the company, which he was very young and I, I'm sure inexperienced with no real business education definitely it's not like you can run a company but he was the one doing it and managing a lot of this stuff and creating a lot of problems for the company or for the other in uh, in this case partners so they ultimately they boot him out uh, i think that was just an old wound that has healed over time over the years um, but regardless you know he has created the companies he had always had problems with deadlines especially with young blood which was his creation um and but you know and this is pacella I, I like pacella actually there's times when i like it uh, and there's times that I don't like him, but I feel that he did a good job in actually bringing the characters to life. I like this one. This is Greg Capullo and Mike Mignola. Really like that cover. That um, pinup art, Beauty and Masterworks, Sienkiewicz. As you can see, you know, yeah, there's there's good stuff here. Domino reveal. That's a lifeful cover. Definitely love that. I like these covers. You know, I like some of this stuff. Going back to what I was saying, and but this is uh, Pacella, who is actually at the end is taking more creative. And he does a good job by, of really copying uh, Leifel's work. He does that. And like I said, but there's times where he, he does that the same thing he does. He's good at copying some of his art, but also his own failures, or the failures in this case of Leifel. Look at this, Weapon Prime. A lot of cheesy stuff. I ain't going to deny it. A lot of cheesy stuff, and I'm going a bit faster. Um, love him or hate him, you know, going back to Leifel, because this is mainly a story of Leifel. I think that um, he has done, he did, he was a power, a power force for Marvel and for 90s comics. Um, we, we have to thank him for that. Um, he brought that attention. Make many young men came into an industry where people were more used to work and, you know, be just, uh, to be soldiers for the machine. And 
and as many other other members of the Image Comics, like Eric Larson and the people that left, I'm sorry, uh, that left to create Image Comics, Jim Lee, Eric Larson, and and so on. They 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 came. They were young and they were hungry. They said, you know, we cannot just abide by these rules. We need to make more money for the our creations for what we do. So they wanted to create image comics for good or bad. You know, they they he was part of that movement that wanted to bring that attention to to the you know to in this case to the to the, the, to, the to the creators, the ones that really do the work, and um, that changed the industry in a way that. You know, most people um, didn't recognize at the time, and they felt that it was totally different. And people gonna blame them to say uh, that they were the cause of that upheaval of that situation that happened at the fall of the, the industry during the 90s. But in many ways, they were the beginning of a new thing. You know, a new era of comics where actually you see now more creators. And I think the industry has changed for good, also for bad in many, many ways. Um, I think that nowadays there is, there is more power for creators, although also there is a lot of limitations for creators. Here you can see Cable, Blood and Metal by JRJR, which a lot of people do, don't, do not like, but it's included here. And these are, are the interchangeable cards, the collectible cards that came with the different uh, and different versions. So what the, the motivate a lot of people to buy more is just, just to get the different cards, the trading cards, which for some is definitely not a good thing. And here you can see more uh, cards by all different artists from this characters from the X-Force, which were very popular and I, uh, during that time. And I think they're still popular uh, among a lot of uh, a lot of the collect, you know, Lamont collectors and comic book readers and fans of the 90s. So you can see there's a gallery and and so on. And here you can see uh, in this part, I like this collections, new recolorings. I like this one in particular. I do like this one. Uh, like that one. I actually like the original more than the recolor one. I like the original more than the recolor one, but it's good that you had those options. Of course, this is the the cover for the dust jacket. Um, the normal one, the, the, not the variant cover, which I have. Now, in conclusion, uh, as you can see here, uh, the question would be, do I recommend this book collection to you? It depends a lot in what's your stand in regards to Rub Liefel. Most of the art here is Rub Liefel. And if you do hate Rub Liefel's work and you are, uh, you don't, you're not a fan of him, you are not going to love it. Now, if you are a fan of his work, Definitely, this is something that is uh, it's nostalgic for those that grew up in the 90s were in this comics. And I do love some of the things that were here, the things that were planted here, the seeds of, of genius that were planted here. One of them, of course, Cable and the X-Force, you know, characters that were brought, Domino, uh, Deadpool. If you want to really know the, print, the beginnings of Deadpool, you might find it here. Um, there's other collections where you want to find more about Deadpool, but here's with the introduction of Deadpool, which was totally different. The Deadpool that is here is not the same Deadpool that you see on television or you're going to see in the movies. It's not. It's totally different. Um, and, you know, it's more uh, brooding. It's more uh, brash. You know, he is not funny at all. Uh, he doesn't make jokes. A, he can be a bit sarcastic, but that's about it. But that's, you're not going to see it here, the sarcasm, as much as you're going to see it on later issues and, and later collections. But definitely, you know, uh, you're going to, to say about Lifel, he can be faulted for a lot of things he did wrong, but also he needs to be commended for the things that he did right. And the sad part of this industry is that people will always be remembered for their mistakes rather for the good things, you know, and that's the sad part. I think he will live in, in, in history, you know, as for the infamous things that he did wrong and rather than for the things that he did right. And, you know, we have to also praise him for the good, you know, for giving, you know, for, for being a voice for, for younger artists, you know, and representing the desires to, you know, to be more involved in the art, to, to, to receive royal, more than the just basic, just a paycheck, you know, to receive royalties for the work. And, you know, he was part of it. And, uh, you know, and he created or initiated some of the, the characters that now live on until they're very popular in the Marvel Universe. So definitely, uh, you know, I recommend it for you at least to give it a try if you, if you are on the, on the, you know, on the fence, you know, maybe not the Optimus, maybe just try to read some of this stuff on digitally to see if you like it or not. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for, for your support. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave your questions below. And uh, thank you for supporting this channel. And, you know, I'll see you in the next review. Take care, my friends. God bless.